People with ADHD have poor attention and they have high levels of impulsivity. They are easily distractible. But the way that shows up is very surprising. With ADHD, just simply can't attend to any. There's a much higher probability that you will have ADHD. And that probability goes up depending on how closely related to that person you happen to be. So for instance, if you're an identical twin and your twin has ADHD, there's a very high concordance, as we say, a very high probability that you will have ADHD, up to 75% chance. If you have a fraternal twin with ADHD, that number goes down a bit in the 50 to 60% range and so on. If you have a parent with ADHD, that number ranges anywhere from 10 to 25% likelihood that you will have ADHD. If you have two parents and so on and so on. If you have a close relative with ADHD, that does not mean that you are fated to have ADHD. And if you happen to have ADHD, there are ways to overcome those symptoms of lack of attention, impulsivity, and so on. Another important point about ADHD is that it has nothing to do with intelligence. Whether or not we're talking about intelligence measured by a standard IQ test, a rather controversial issue, as many of you probably know, there are lots of forms of intelligence that a standard IQ test just wouldn't pick up. Emotional intelligence, musical intelligence, spatial intelligence, all sorts of intelligences. None of them are related to ADHD. Being very high functioning doesn't make you more likely to have ADHD. And being ADHD doesn't necessarily mean that you have a low IQ. So there are people with ADHD who have low IQs, people with ADHD with high IQs, people with ADHD with high emotional IQ or with low IQ in the emotional scale. It's all over the place. The important point is that your ability to attend and focus does not relate to how smart you are or your IQ of any type, not just a standard IQ. The renaming of ADD to ADHD took place in the mid to late 1980s when the psychiatric community and the psychological community started taking better notice of the fact that so-called hyperactive kids also had attentional issues. This might seem obvious, but there's been extensive and ongoing revision of the criteria for designating a psychiatric disorder. And this is still an ongoing process, even today. So right now, the current estimates are that about one in 10 children, and probably more, have ADHD. The current estimates are anywhere from 10%, one in 10, to as high as 12%. Now, fortunately, about half of those will resolve with proper treatment, but the other half typically don't. The other thing that we are seeing a lot nowadays is increased levels of ADHD in adults. And there's some question as to whether or not those adults had ADHD that went undetected during their childhood or whether or not ADHD is now cropping up in adulthood due to the way that we are interacting with the world. In particular, smartphone use, the combination of email, text, real world interactions, multiple apps and streams of media and social media all coming in at once, trying to manage life all of the things that are going on are creating a kind of cloud of pulls on our attention. And so there is this question to whether or not we are creating ADHD in adults that never had ADHD prior to being an adult. Up is very surprising. You might think that people with ADHD just simply can't attend to anything. They really can't focus, even if they really want to. But that's simply not the case. People with ADHD... Yes, they are distractible. Yes, they are impulsive. Yes, they are easily annoyed by things happening in the room. They sometimes have a high level of emotionality as well. Not always, but often. However, people with ADHD can have a hyper-focus, an incredible ability to focus on things that they really enjoy or are intrigued by. Now, this is a very important point because typically... We think of somebody with ADHD as being really wild and hyperactive or having no ability whatsoever to sit still and attend. And while that phenotype, as we call it, that contour of behavior and cognition can exist, many people, if not all people with ADHD, if you give them something they really love, like if the child loves video games or if a child loves to draw or if an adult loves a particular type of movie or a person very much, 
they will obtain laser focus without any effort. So that tells us that people with ADHD have the capacity to attend, but they can't engage that attention for things that they don't really, really want to do. And as we all know, much of life, whether or not you're a child or an adult, involves doing a lot of things that we don't want to do. Much of our schooling involves doing things that we would prefer not to do and sort of forcing ourselves to do it, to attend even though we are not super interested in what we are attending to. There are a couple other things that people with ADHD display quite often. One is challenges with time perception. Time perception is a fascinating aspect of how our brain works. And later we're going to talk about time perception and how you can actually get better at time perception. It's very likely that right now you are doing things that get in the way of optimal time perception. And I will tell you how to adjust your ability to measure time with your brain. People with ADHD often run late, but what's interesting and surprising is that if they are given a deadline, they actually can perceive time very well. And they often can focus very well if the consequences of not completing a task or not attending are severe enough. 